hey folks, today I want to show you how you can use the power of artificial intelligence to generate traditional fiddle tunes. Specifically, I'll be using folkrnn.org, which is an AI model based on recurrent neural networks. Now here's the fun part. I'm going to play a little trick on my friend Hayes. I'm going to tell him that I wrote one of the AI composed fiddle tunes and then see if he believes me. But first, let me give you a quick demo of how the AI works. Go to folkrnn.org, click on the models tab to select which training data you'd like to use. Set your temperature to a value between 0.5 5 and 1. This controls the randomness of the generated tune, and I find that above 1 you start getting nonsense. You set your chosen modality like major, minor, mixolydian, dorian, and so on. You click on the compose button, and after a few seconds a new melody should appear, and if you like it, you can name it. Pretty cool, right? Now let's see if I can convince Hayes that I wrote one of these tunes. Wish me luck. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in learning more about bluegrass phrasing, Hayes is actually holding a workshop on that topic on April 1st. You can sign up for it at LessonsWithMarcel.com. I'll put a link in the description. All right, let's go prank Hayes. Did that seem off to you? Because all of that was AI generated. I didn't write that. The script, anything I said, I didn't write that. My new friend Chad GBT did. Chaos in the streets. The Illuminati used chemtrails to fake the moon landing. The reptilians are using aliens held hostage in Area 51 to keep the earth flat. The government is using mind control through the water supply to brainwash people into believing that Bigfoot is actually a hologram created by the Freemasons. Wait, I think I just used AI to generate the last part of that joke. Man, the robots really are taking over. Also, when I asked ChatGBT to help with my conspiracy joke, it created misinformation that was so crazy sounding that I can't even say it on YouTube. It did involve Big Pharma, which I liked, but the Bigfoot hologram one was just funnier. Anyway, one last thing before we get started, I wanna give a quick shout out to my friend Luke for introducing me to the folk RNN AI. Luke's not only an excellent musician, but he's also a great part of our community over on Discord. It's always lovely to have him around. Thanks again, Luke. Now this plan is not fully formed and the only person I've talked about this plan with is a robot, mostly because I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning, my wife was still asleep, and I'm gonna need full cooperation from the robots if I'm gonna pull this off. Shout out to all my robots out there. So first of all, I need to secure a sponsor for this video, and since Luke told me about Folk RNN, I'm gonna ask if his company, Strum Machine, wants to sponsor this video. Can you generate a casual business message to my friend Luke. Hey Luke, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. I just wanted to reach out and let you know that I have a great video that I think would be a perfect fit for a Strum Machine sponsorship. If you agree to do the sponsorship, this message will probably be in the video because the entire thing was composed by ChatGBT. That's perfect. Let's send that to Luke. A little bit of copy and a little bit of paste. Next, we have to bait the trap to lure Hayes. Now, Hayes is my lovable and oddly cooperative friend. He was previously in my Why Do Some People Hate Billy Strings video. The one mandolin scale you need to know. You have to see your Tetra chords, Hayes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, don't be scared to ask these bluegrass questions. Sorry, man. I'm, I'm from the Midwest. We we always give a little more than we should up here, you know? Hayes will make you a, a jello salad with every answer. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably in more of my videos, but if you're not subscribed to his channel, you should be. Can you generate a short, casual message to my friend Hayes that covers these points? And this is where the scheme really gets going. It's, it's tough because I feel like Hayes will get suspicious. Like the message needs to be very casual because a lot of times when I write these messages, I'm very direct and to the point. Hey Hayes, I need your help with a video today. Since my collaboration with David Benedict fell through, I'm on a tight deadline. The concept is a composition challenge where I'll compose a fiddle tune in an hour and you can film yourself playing it with Strum Machine on any instrument. Later today or tonight, we can chat about composing and your thoughts on the tune. It'll only take an hour and I wanna get everything done today for continuity and the time crunch. Thanks, that's good. Let's send that to Hayes. A little bit of copy and a little bit of paste. A few moments later. Hey says, yo dude, do you have 24 hours worth of wiggle room on this one? I'm driving up to Michigan this afternoon for a week of gigs. Won't be able to record anything until tomorrow afternoon. Would love to help. Hope that works. Hopefully iPhone footage is accessible too. Yeah, right. Th this'll work, right? 
Okay, so let's figure out some rules real quick. Whatever fiddle tune we do come up with, I think I have to retranscribe it into Guitar Pro. And with that, I think I should be able to like set up like a first and second ending and like label A parts and B parts. I don't think that's a big deal. I mean, it still takes the crux of the tune. It's more about making it like not suspicious to haze. We'll probably do 4-4 four, four and we'll probably make it a major tune. That's probably what I'd do, right? If I actually had to do this challenge, I probably would compose a major tune in an hour. Hopefully this takes less than an hour. Uh, the last thing that's important is that you can copy some of the ABC notation. For instance, if we like the A part, we can put the A part in there as like seed information and then it'll just generate us a B part. There it is, generating our first tune. What's it sound like? It's kind of tough when they don't really imply chord changes. None of this is usable. Let's do another one. Well, we're off to a great start. I'm not super impressed with that one either. Let's take this down to 0.5 and let's see if it sort of plays it even straighter if we get something more usable. It's so much harder because Hayes knows my playing. Like he's heard fiddle tunes I've written before. So he might listen to this and be like, this ain't you. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I feel like some of you might be looking at this and being like, well, you know, this is proof that the AI is no good. A lot of the tunes that we found haven't been very interesting. But if you've ever written a fiddle tune on your own, you know that this is how the process works. You write lots of little melodies and you're like, oh, that's kind of interesting, but like not interesting enough, right? Watching folk RNN work is kind of like how you would write a tune. <laughs> you know, you try all these ideas and a lot of them are kind of boring and then you find the one. This is kind of good. But it doesn't end. No, it doesn't. Oh my God, it doesn't have a resolution. I feel like we're getting closer to something that feels real. This feels pretty good. Let's say we really like that A part. We just copy it from there and we can put it into the C and it should compose us a new B part now. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. Wait, I want to listen to this whole thing. I think we might be able to work with that one. I know Hayes is in because he just sent me, hell yeah, brother. Okay, so I've written down the tune. I think I'm gonna have to put it in a different key because the intro is a little awkward. So here it is in D. It's actually pretty convincing in D because it seems like I'm doing like this on purpose, right? This is like a little motif that comes up a couple times. Yeah, right, and so some of these like B notes could be on that string. And that'll be like, oh yeah, I wrote it like that on purpose. And this floating thing, people who know my composing would think that I would write that. Okay, let's make this thing look like one of my tabs. Even though our AI didn't generate like first and second ending pickups, I think the inclusion of them would make it just a little more convincing. So we're gonna, we're gonna cheat the tiniest little bit. Allow me to cheat just this one time to make it more convincing. A lot of times in these tunes, you have a little pickup that would push you back into be one of the A part. I can't believe he agreed to this. That means that he read the AI generated message and was like not suspicious. <laughs> uh, okay, let's figure out what the chords would be. <laughs> All right, so I guess the next thing to do is to pop open Strum Machine. Oh, we don't have a name for the fiddle tune yet. Oh, hold up there for one second. Let's let past Marcel figure out what we're gonna call the tune. And in the meantime, I just got an AI generated script for the Strum Machine sponsorship. Hey, what's up guitar pickers? Marcel here. And today we have an exciting sponsor for the channel. Have you ever wanted to practice your bluegrass picking but couldn't find the right song to practice with? Well, look no further than Strum Machine. Strum Machine is a powerful app that lets you practice your bluegrass picking with over 1,000 songs from bluegrass and related genres. But that's not all. With Strum Machine, you can quickly add and customize your own songs to practice with. This means you can practice with the songs you love at the tempo that's right for you. Plus, Strum Machine is continually developed by its creator, Luke, who's also a bluegrass musician. So you know you're getting an app that's been made with the needs of bluegrass pickers in mind. Plus, the app is available on desktop and mobile, so you can practice wherever you are. Now I know what you're thinking. Marcel, this all sounds great, but what's the catch? Well, there is no catch. In fact, Strum Machine is offering an extended 30-day free trial for viewers of this video. Just head to strummachine.com Marcel to sign up. So if you're a bluegrass picker looking for a powerful and customizable practice tool, look no further than Strum Machine. Thanks for watching, and happy picking. 
I just got this uh, mouse pad for Cedar Point in Ohio, and Hayes lives in Ohio, so maybe we call it the Cedar Point Real. <laughs> How could Hayes be suspicious, right? We're calling out, you know, the best thing in Ohio. And let's try to play along with Strum Machine. Ah, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think it'll convince him. You've already gotten my fiddle tune, the Cedar Point Reel, which I named just for you, knowing that you would be the person to play it. <laughs> I mean, Cedar. everybody knows that Cedar Point is better than Kings Island if you're from Ohio, you know what I mean? So I'm glad you at least chose the right one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think that it would just be interesting if we kind of talked about what you like about the tune, what you didn't like. Because I wrote this very quick, I was just trying to like nail a traditional fiddle tune sound. It's even kind of maybe a little Irish sounding in some places, like I could imagine some cuts and taps in there. I'm glad that you said the Irish thing, because that was definitely one of the first impressions that I got. Not so much that this tune was like an Irish fiddle tune, but that it's it sounds like one of the American fiddle tunes that we borrowed from Ireland and then bluegrassified. You know yeah. what I mean? So there are these kind of like, almost like square arpeggio figures where it's just like a descending. You know what I mean? Like these kind of motions up and down like that. Like you said, when you would hear an Irish player play that, there would be like, you know what I mean? But that's definitely something that I picked up on. Also, in certain spots, you would strategically like double a note. I feel like that's that's kind of like a really Irishy kind of thing that I really dug in the sound of this. Like, what is it? Measure three of the B part. Uh, well, awesome, man. I'm, I'm glad that you got something out of it. And uh, I'm glad that it makes sense to you. And if I'm reading you right, you don't have any super harsh criticism anywhere. No, not at all, man. This is what I would call like, this is a stock fiddle tune. This is one that sounds like any fiddle tune that would be called at a jam session, I feel like, at least where I'm from. You know what I mean? Well, I do need to come clean about this fiddle tune that I'm showing you now. You know how I said I wrote it myself? Well, it turns out I've been lying this whole time. It was actually written by an artificial intelligence program called Folk RNN. I can't believe I got away with it for so long, but hey, at least we can still enjoy playing it together, knowing it was created by a machine. Oh, and by the way, this message was also composed by an AI. It looks like the robots are taking over one message at a time. <laughs> are you serious, man? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. That is so awesome. You totally got me. <laughs> also, we were just in the teacher call with all of our teachers, and since this came up, I had to lie to all of them, too. <laughs> Flashback. I shot an hour's worth of footage um, for the for the video that we're going to work on, Hayes. Is that an interview or a playing lesson? We're doing a video where I had to compose a fiddle tune in an hour, and then Hayes is going to like play it and kind of review it. End of flashback. So, so everyone thinks that I wrote a tune in an hour, and in reality, I got Folk RNN to generate this tune in maybe half an hour. If it still took the AI half an hour, I feel like it's legit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'd also like to point out that David Benedict had nothing to do with this. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. Yeah, because I, I remember like getting the message. It's like 911. You know what I mean? I've never received a message from Marcel that was like 100% like 911. We got to get this taken care of, Hayes. Like David Benedict couldn't make the call. Hayes is your second call for mandolin. Like that was red flag number one. But I kind of let that one go, you know? <laughs> Also, that message was generated by an AI as well. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I'm just getting like owned by the robots here, dude, you know? <laughs> I was really worried you were gonna read that message and be like, that doesn't sound like Marcel. This is like weirdly formal. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm going back to read this email right now to see like how it hits me. How do, how do we feel about AI and the arts? Because there's been a lot of talk about like image generation where the, the models that are trained are trained using artists' images and the artists weren't compensated for that training data. And furthermore, every time that the AI runs, the artist isn't being compensated because the AI is not like an artist. The AI cannot use reference material. The AI is literally using their material to construct the new thing, right? 
Now, we haven't really seen that in, in music yet because a lot of the music AIs are awful. And this particular AI I felt comfortable with using because it's all traditional material. These these aren't copyrighted tunes. Do you think do you do you think there is any worry for musicians? Every person that's learned a fiddle tune and engaged with some kind of traditional community for the last couple hundred years, we could almost see ourselves as like bits of code within a large algorithm. Lost Indian is Cherokee Shuffle in D. When I look at it through that lens, like having the kind of like grand historical arc of fiddle music, I don't really see AI so much as like a threat to musicians or fiddle tune composers or anything like that. If anything, it can show us the formulas maybe that are so ridiculously apparent in our music that we could begin to deviate from them. It's interesting that the, uh, you know, the, the crux of the argument is a lot of times this copyright issue. Copyright is relatively new, at least in music. It's a, it's a property of like the sheet music industry that things started being copyrighted like extensively. It's a point of criticism uh, when people bring up A.P. Carter and his like song collecting in the South, you know what I mean? Like he didn't have a recording machine, but he took, you know, a guy around with him who was his recording machine you know what yeah. i mean shout out to uh leslie leslie riddle what's his name yeah. yes exactly exactly i think that as a result of the kind of rapid dissemination of information across the internet we're rapidly approaching some kind of reckoning from an intellectual property standpoint and i think these ai things are really driving that you know, pu putting the foot on the gas pedal for this kind of reckoning. Some of them are, you know, some of the developers for these AIs are specifically even doing this, you know, to show us that like, yo, it's already been written. We're just regurgitating stuff over and over and over again. If you're talking about like pop artists who are suing each other left and right for stealing each other's yeah, songs, right. when in fact the two artists in the suit owe credit to someone else who came before them, you know? So it's 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 like, I, I don't really see AI being destructive in this way. I think it's just making us realize how broken the system was that we built in the first place. Anyway, dude, uh, thanks for being part of this conversation. It was super interesting. I'm so glad that I got you and that you were not suspicious at any point. Uh, that makes me feel really good about how this turned out. Yeah, well, uh, it's it's uh, just don't take advantage of our friendship, Marcel. You know, that just goes to show how much trust I place in you, okay? <laughs> Thanks for tuning into our video. We hope you enjoyed this little prank that we pulled on Hayes. Don't forget to check out Strum Machine using the link in the description. It's a great backing track tool that can help you improve your music skills. Also, just a friendly reminder that if you're interested in taking your bluegrass skills to the next level, Hayes is hosting a workshop on bluegrass phrasing over at LessonsWithMarcel.com. So be sure to sign up if you don't want to miss out on that opportunity. And that's all for today, folks. Thanks again for watching. We'll see y'all later. And then, and then I'm talking to the AI, you know, and I'm like, do you have any other ideas for the way this video could go? And uh, the AI came up with this idea for a reveal, right? You could have someone play the tune and then tell them that it was AI generated. This all happened yesterday morning. <laughs> dude, dude. <laughs> this is crazy.